Communism and cursive writing will be part of mandatory curriculum in New Hampshire schools under a pair of bills which harken back to a bygone era of history and handwriting. And you wonder, why are they part of bygone eras? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, wow. <laughs> the House Education Committee in New Hampshire held public hearings last Wednesday on Republican bills to require that students be taught cursive writing. Good. Okay. Uh, Got to be able to read the founding documents. Man. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, the found, founding documents. That's the only thing in cursive you'd <laughs> ever want to read. And, and, and honestly... That's probably why they don't teach it anymore. Probably. These people are nefarious. They think deep. That's probably true. Uh, and receive at least, <laughs> this is incredible, <laughs> one hour of instruction on the nature and history of communism. The sponsors of both proposals send their legislation said their legislation was inspired by conversations that they had with concerned parents. Mm-hmm. Many schools do not teach history like they used to, according to Representative Michael Moffitt. Uh, educated citizens in America today need to understand what communism is and how that political and economic system has shaped our history and affects all of us today. And we're going to cram that into an hour. Now, yeah, one hour a year is what I'm understanding from this, right? An hour a year? I, I don't know about that, Bill, but I know in Florida they considered it a big victory because students are required to get 45 minutes per year. <laughs> <laughs> what? And you wonder why our kids know nothing. Okay, so speaking against the bill okay. was Sebastian Fuentes, uh, New Hampshire Movement Politics Director for Rights and Democracy Advocacy. All right, red flags you know that's all over that oh, and acronym. Red is <laughs> very appropriate for the kind of flag you'd uh-huh. be throwing here. Yeah. Fuentes said he saw the evils of communism, get this, growing up in Peru. Okay. Mm-hmm. But as a 40-year-old father of two children in public school, he doesn't believe teaching about it should be a priority. (laughs) Communism is an issue, absolutely. But let's talk about what is really killing our generation. For example, white supremacy. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, If we're going to talk about Pol Pot and Mao and Putin and Nikita Khrushchev... Let's talk about George Floyd and Trayvon Martin like we haven't. As if we haven't. And let's talk about them as it really happened. Let's tell the truth about what happened to Trayvon Martin. Let's tell the truth about that. Let's tell the truth about George Floyd. He said, if we're going to talk about the siege of Saigon, let's talk about the siege of the U.S. Capitol. Oh, God. Yeah, we we haven't spent any time on January 6th, right? Uh, That is bad. First of all, (laughs) at least these Republicans see a need, right? Right. And are trying to fill a void in in our students' learning process. But one hour? These kids haven't seen communism in action in their lifetimes. They think it's about everybody having an equal amount of stuff. In, in a way, it is about that because everybody in a communist regime turns out to be equally poor and destitute. So that kind of is true, but it, it's not the way they look at it. Our kids today have not been taught the real and true fruits of communism. The death toll due to communist regimes, nearly 100 million, which includes... Uh, death through executions, man-made hunger, famine, war, uh, deportations, and forced labor. You know, for the people who take Chairman Mao lunchboxes to school or adorn their Christmas trees with Mao ornaments, they may be surprised to learn that Mao is responsible for the death of 65 million people. 65 million! Shouldn't our kids know about that? Yeah, I think that's kind of important. That's a number you can't even get your head around. Death from communist policies in the Soviet Union are usually listed at about 20 million. The UN puts the death toll of the Holodomor 
Just the Holodomor alone at up to 10 million people. That, of course, was man-caused famine in the Soviet Union, during which Joseph Stalin eliminated up to 10 million of his own people in 1932 and 1933. Those two years, 10 million people starved them to death and put people at his grain fields uh, with guns to shoot and kill people who were there to try to get a morsel of food because there wasn't any for them elsewhere. They would actually go to the fields of grain and the and the and wherever they could find food and find that they were guarded by Stalin's men. I mean, you had the Cambodian killing fields, which resulted in the death of two million Cambodians. That was almost a third of their entire population. They killed almost Pol Pot killed almost a third of his population. And this guy from New Hampshire is comparing that to Anything that's happened in America? White supremacy? Shut up. Sebastian Fuentes has the balls to talk about white supremacy as the big boogeyman the kids should be learning about. Show me the death toll from white supremacy. I'd like to see it because I have no idea what it is, but it doesn't compare to communism. I'll tell you that. Maybe it's not zero. But neither is the deaths from blacks who hate whites. And it can't compare to the ravages of communism. They'll talk all day about how bad Donald Trump is. But you don't say a word about 100 million people being slaughtered by communism. They won't provide any context for our kids on this. So that, you know, when they see both sides, then they can determine for themselves which system is better. Uh, They'll teach them about slavery and the evils uh, that rot all day. You'll teach them about race riots. And you'll show how ugly some white people behaved during Jim Crow, the civil rights movement. You teach them all the problems the United States has had to deal with over the years. But not the goodness and the greatness of this nation. So they grow up. Our kids are growing up with negative feelings about their own country. And they're ashamed of it in large measure. We just talked last week about the study that showed uh, just 16% of Generation Z adults are proud of being Americans. 16%. Tragic. Well, but it's obvious that that's going to happen because they're shown all the warts and none of the beauty. Of, of America. And then they see communist China being praised and defended by their her- heroes in the NBA. And even while China continues to be held up as an example of cutting edge environmentalism by idiots like Al Gore, they continue to pollute the planet more than any other country mm. on earth by far. By far. And you have Cubans that are so ravaged by communism that they're willing to leave everything they own behind and hop on an inner tube trying to float the 90 miles over shark-infested ocean to escape to the United States. That's how bad communism is. Ask the, ask the Cubans who get here on all their makeshift rafts that have, that have taken their lives in their hands. I mean, literally taken their lives in their hands to get here. So to go from not teaching it at all to an hour per year, Mm -hmm. tiny, tiny, tiny little step in the right direction. But they should be taught the horrors of communism an hour a day. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And and if you're a history teacher listening to this, you can you can find ways to sneak in communism into other lessons that don't count against your hour. There, like if you're talking about (laughs) World War Two, right? You could be like, yeah, and then after World War Two, they built the Berlin Wall. The end. Or you could say, mm. and then at the end of World War II, well, a little bit after that, they built the Berlin Wall because um, uh, East Germans were trying to escape uh, communism, and they were fleeing that 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 Soviet-occupied part of their nation, and they had to shoot people that were trying to escape into freedom. Yeah, uh, but what you'll families. have is people say, well, we're building a wall of our own on yeah. the southern port. Yeah, that's to keep people out, not to keep people in. 
Our, our walls in the United States don't keep people trapped yeah, in the United and, States. And just ask the kids, why would they be fleeing a, a communism? Why, why, yeah, why would when it's that, so great. Yeah. When everybody's equal. Why would they be leaving the Russian sector? So much equity. <sighs> and maybe even more importantly than history teachers, how about parents? Yeah. Maybe, if, maybe not leave it to the school system. Maybe parents yeah. should be studying up on this. Get the big... What is it called? The Black Book of Communism? Oh, my goodness. I'm so proud of my oldest uh, uh, who read through that. It was just horrifying. That'll teach your kids yep. a thing or two about communism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, just, it's light reading. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, yes. it, I mean the history but of communism. It, it's necessary. Mm-hmm. It's necess- They've got to know because they're taught, again, they're taught all the garbage about what we've done. Yeah. And, 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 and none of the good stuff. Talk about how states like Florida and now New Hampshire are trying to mandate that on a state level. Mm-hmm. But as you've stated previously, where the battle is really won is on, at the school board level, right? Right. In other words, the state can yeah. set the standards, but the actual materials are being decided by your school boards. And um, I just stumbled upon this thing. Uh, this uh, this website is called 1776projectpac.com. And so what they do is that they're trying to... To, to organize and get good people, American-loving people, into these school boards. You know, mm-hmm. parents that care, mm-hmm. that can go in there and, and affect change. Like, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, was it Caldwell, Idaho? Did I get that suburb wrong? Oh, I forgot. Anyway. No, remember, I think we, it was Caldwell. Yeah, we had the... Suburb uh, of Boise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th- mm-hmm. that, that's, a, that's a perfect example. Go to Project PAC or 1776projectpac.com. And take a look and get involved. And, and these mm. are the kind of groups that are trying to get behind good people. And um, I love this quote, though, from Albert Einstein. Uh, he said this uh, before he started doing cell phone commercials. Um, <laughs> quote, education is what remains after one has forgotten what one has learned in school. That's good stuff. Yeah. So you, Good stuff. So what you are teaching your kids <laughs> is more important than the indoctrination. It's indoctrination up and down. You name the issue. You just went through them. Mm-hmm. Whether or not it's, you know, communism is good or environmentalism is, is we should worship Gaia. Mm-hmm. Or or it's, uh, uh, what is your pronoun going to be today? I mean, your kids have no chance. So It, by the way, it. That's what we're going is with? my pronoun today. All right. Yes. So uh, mm-hmm. it. It and that. It and that. Yes.